What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys Wireshark. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to show you guys Wireshark. And as I stated in previous videos, I want to get in and start showing you guys some cybersecurity applications that are used it within the industry. And Wireshark is one of those tools that is heavily used globally when it comes to cybersecurity. And basically what it is, is a network scanner and monitoring tool. And you can use it to analyze the traffic on your network or on a network that you're connected to. And so I wanted to go on and show you guys how to actually install Wireshark on on a Ubuntu based system or Debian based system, uh, which is pretty much the same on any other distribution. It just uses the package manager for that distribution to install Wireshark. And just like I've said in the past, majority of the cybersecurity tools that are used like on Kali Linux and Parrot OS can be installed on other distributions. You, you don't have to install Kali Linux in order to get access to these cybersecurity tools. They can all be installed on whatever distribution that you choose to use. Now, let me go on and go to Wireshark's website so we, we can review a little bit about the actual application. So let's get started on that. Boom. So I have Wireshark website up and it's Wireshark.org. And I'll actually put it down in the description of the video so you guys can have a link to get to it. But it's pretty much the website for it. And what I wanted to do was go to the about me page so you guys uh, can get a little feel for what Wireshark is all about. And if we scroll down a little bit, it kind of explains what it is. It says Wireshark is a is the world's foremost and widely used network protocol analyzer. It lets you see what's happening on your network at the microscopic level and is the de facto standard across many commercial and nonprofit enterprise enterprises, government agencies and educational institutions. Uh, Wireshark development thrives thanks to the volunteer contributions of network experts around the globe and its continue and the continuation of a project started by Gerald Combs in 1998. So that gives you a little bit about it. You know, it was actually, you know, created back in 1998 and I believe it had a different name at the time, but I think it was some copyright issues that caused them to change the name. But now today it's called Wireshark. And then let's just read a little bit more right here. It says Wireshark has a rich feature set, which includes the following deep inspection of hundreds of protocols with more being added all the time. It says live capture and offline analysis, standard three pane packet browser, which I'll explain that to you guys when we actually get the application up and going and then multi-platform. So it runs on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Solaris, FreeBSD, NetBSD, and many others. It says uh, captured, captured network packets can be browsed via a GUI or via the TTY mode, T-Shark utility. The most powerful display filters in the industry. And it says rich voice over IP analysis, rewrite many different capture file formats so yeah they can it can be exported in different formats uh so you can use it with other applications as far as analysis goes and then it says capture files compressed with gzip can be can be decompressed on the fly it says live data can be read from ethernet ieee 802.11 uh ppp HDLC, ATM, Bluetooth, USB, token ring, frame re relay, and others. And it says decryption support for many protocols. Uh, and it says coloring rules can be applied to packets list for quick intuitive analysis. And I'll show you guys that when we actually open it up. And then also it states uh, output can be exported to XML, uh, PostScript, uh csv and plain text 
so that's pretty much all i wanted to kind of read what you read about it let's go on and get to the installation port uh which i'll kind of make that part quick so let's get to that now boom so i have my virtual machine up and running like i said this is zubuntu 20.04 uh it has the xfce desktop so let's go down and um open up the terminal and get to the install i know you guys are excited about this one. <laughs> but anyway uh so first thing you want to do on any system that you're updating you want to update the system so let's run sudo apt updates and that'll refresh the repositories as well as check to make sure you know they have any if they have any updates for the system uh, which i assume this doesn't have any updates at the moment because yeah and it doesn't so cool uh, let's go down and clear this and let's install Wireshark. And like I stated, it's in the main repository for Ubuntu. So all you have to do is type sudo apps install and then Wireshark. And I'm going to tab it out. And there we go. And we can just install that. It'll install all the dependencies and everything that goes along with it. Um, and let's just go through the installation process. And it shouldn't take too long to install. Um, but if it does, I'll skip ahead. Okay, cool. So the installation is complete. So Wireshark is installed. Now it's two ways to actually open up the application. You can go in here and find it under internet. Uh, and, but one thing about Wireshark, you have to run it as sudo, um, unless you have it enabled where you can run Wireshark as a normal user and allow normal users to capture packets. But I didn't, select that within the configuration the configuration actually pops up uh, when you install it and one thing about this system that i have it already had wireshark installed on it previously uh, and i remember removing it but typically what happens when you install wireshark it'll pop up with a small configuration it basically asks you if you want to allow normal users to run and capture packets within Wireshark. And let me show you that now right fast. I'm gonna open up Wireshark from the actual command or from the actual uh, program within the start menu. And you'll see that I cannot run any captures on that interface. And that's because I have that configuration set to where normal users cannot run and capture packets as a regular user. So you would have to kind of go in and change the configuration in order to run as a normal user. But one thing it does, it warns you not to turn it on where normal users can run and capture packets. They say it could be a security risk. So you want to make sure you leave it this way and just run it as sudo or log into your root account and actually get in that way and start running and capturing packets. But let's go down and close it that way. And I'm going to run it as sudo from the command line. So let me clear right fast. But you just basically type sudo and then Wireshark. And this will allow you to run Wireshark uh, as administrator. Okay, cool. So the first thing you'll be greeted with is basically a welcome. And it'll ask you what interface you want to use to run Wireshark on and capture packets. And if you look right here, it'll show that. Uh, you are sending and receiving traffic under this interface, which is my main interface for this virtual machine. And this virtual machine, I have it set to bridge, so it has its own IP address, but you can see that it's sending and receiving packets. So that's the interface you want to select. So I'm going to select that interface. Uh, and all you have to do is double click on it and it will actually start capturing packets. Now, as you can see, um, my network is kind of slow right now. Nobody's on the network. It's 11 o'clock at night when I'm recording this video or close to midnight. Uh, so all you're going to see is like ARP request or broadcast uh, going out at the moment. So I'm going to just uh, start pushing some traffic out on the network by just going uh, to the browser. And actually, I'll go to a couple websites and that way we can get some TC TCP packets uh, going on here so let's uh start off by uh opening up the browser and actually let's just go to youtube right fast and then also let's go down and go to my main website 
uh, keepitechie.com, which I'm rebuilding at the moment, but that'll get us some more packets as well. And I'm gonna just click around on my website just to kind of invoke more packets to be captured. Uh, and then let's go back to the home page and then let's go down and close it and let's hit stop. Now, before we start looking at the packets or what it actually captured, I wanna quickly walk through the navigation uh, and as you can see, this is the actual start uh, capturing button. So it'll start capturing packets if you hit the short fin right here. And then right here is to stop uh, capturing packets. So while it's running, you can hit the red square and it'll stop capturing packets. And then, and this right here is to restart. So if it's already running, uh, you can restart the current capture. Uh, so if it's already running, you hit that, that'll be highlighted as well. And you can restart the, the current capture. So it'll start from one uh, on there. And then this is just some capture options right here. Uh, and then you can open up capture files and it's a whole bunch of options here you can use to actually uh, just do certain things within the application. And I didn't wanna go through all of it. I just kinda wanted to give you guys a brief overview, but check this out. And Wireshark actually has a lot of documentation on understanding how to navigate through the application. But as you can see, it's a simple application and I wanted to break it up. It's broken up into like four, four groups, so to speak, or four areas. Uh, so right here, this area right here allows you to filter. So this is the filter area. So you can type in different protocols up here and it'll filter what you have captured down here. Now this is the capture information or the main capture information. And then this breaks out based on what you select up here at the top. So it'll break out the information right here and then this will actually show you the packet down below so that's why i say it's like four areas so you can filter up here uh this list out all of the packets that you capture and then this is information about each individual packet and then this is the packet data so to speak now let me go down and explain the columns in here or actually the table because that's the way i look at it is it's basically a table you know you, you guys know i work in database or i work with databases well this is basically a table you know you got your columns and i just wanted to break out each one of these columns so let's go back up to the top but as you can see it starts out with the number um so it each capture each captured packet you know it'll number it and then right here it has the time and then there's the source right there so this is the source ip and it could be ip version 4 or it could be ip version 6 uh, and then the destination for that actual packet as well as the protocol and this is what you want to use when you're filtering up here you filter by protocols and then here is just some information about the packet itself uh, so it kind of explains a little bit about it like i was saying i didn't have much uh traffic going on on my network at the moment like i said it's just basically broadcast information or you know you'll see a arp now and then where it says uh like who has this specific ip address uh until this system on my network so it's kind of like a broadcast where it's asking who has a specific ip address and you know orp is basically made to kind of build and maintain like a mapping database uh of your network and so uh orp requests are always going on on your network so that's a normal packet and you start understanding this stuff once you play around and start capturing a lot of different networks you'll you'll see a lot of the same information you'll automatically start recognizing what is what and the purpose of things that are going on on your network and you can start filtering out things that are not supposed to be there but anyway let's go through and i want to look at uh one or two of these like tcp packets uh and actually let me show you guys how to filter and then also it was another thing i want to show you guys uh actually these colors mean something uh and i know you guys should have heard me say that when we were reading the documentation off the website but these colors actually mean something and it's put there so you could quickly recognize 
certain protocols. Uh, like, like if we go under view, man, let me show you guys this uh, coloring rules. So if you click on coloring and rules, this will tell you what all the colors mean. So, you know, uh, this light pink is TCP, this light blue is UDP. Uh, and then you'll see like right here, TCP, ARP, um, you'll see errors up in there and then bad TCP requests. So like bad errors, system events, uh, broadcast, um, you know, and SMB. And so that kind of gives you a map of what those colors mean. So if you ever need to, um, refer to that, then this is where you can find out what those colors actually mean. And I just wanted you guys to understand that, but let's go on and, uh, close this. And one of the things I want to show you guys was like, uh, some of these TCP requests and actually let's go up here and just show you guys the filter feature. So if you type in TCP, as you can see, it turned green. That lets you know that you have it typed in when it's red, you don't have a protocol selected yet. So, uh, TCP, uh, that's green. And I'm gonna just, uh, put TCP on it All right fast and you'll see. Uh, we got a couple packets in here that we captured and I'm not sure what the IP address is for this server or this system. Uh, so let's go down and open up a tab. I just want to see what the IP address is. So IPA, um, and my IP address for this system is one zero three. Okay, cool. So I want to look for requests from one zero three. So and when you select on the packet and that was one thing i didn't explain this portion so you got your frames right here so you can go into here it'll show your frames like the inter interface uh information uh and the frame number you know and just just some more information then ethernet information then you got your internet protocol version 4 so ip version 4 uh information and then the transmission control protocol uh tcp information and then you got your source port you got destination port you know uh sequence acknowledge you know lin um and it's all broken out right in here so that'll give you you know all that information broken out uh and that may not be a good packet let's see what this one says uh client hello and if you click on it however you had the um had everything expanded right here it'll stay expanded if you click on a different protocol and one thing about this tcp packet well actually it's tls so that might be from youtube when i actually went to youtube uh because packets you know sent to youtube anything on youtube is going to be encrypted it's going to have https you know and so you can't see that but one thing i wanted to kind of show you was when i went to my wordpress site and actually let me filter on uh, http uh, and this will get us a little bit more information. Uh, and basically what I wanted to look at was some of these HTTP requests, uh, that I made to my actual website. So there we go. I was actually looking under TCP, but I meant to look under HTTP, uh, to see it. But I just wanted you guys to see exactly, uh, kind of what was going on, but this is, was a request to my servers. Basically, uh, it could be getting anything. It could be pulling an image. This, this packet that we caught could be, you know, asking, requesting for an image on a page, or it could be asking for the text on a page. It could be anything. So, and as you can see on this one, you know, it kind of breaks it out. So if you go under HTTP, uh, which is right here the http uh it's the hypertext transfer protocol you can kind of see uh exactly what was actually being requested um like this this actual slide or something is a jpeg image uh and that's kind of what i wanted to show you guys uh that it does capture you know pretty much everything that's on your network
but hopefully this gets you guys started I, like i said i'm not no cyber guy i haven't been working in the cybersecurity field i'm not a cybersecurity professional i just kind of play around with this software at my leisure uh and so i'm not i'm nowhere near an expert on how to use it so uh if you want more information just go to the wireshark website and that way you can get a whole lot more information on how to actually use this tool i just know that it's a great tool i don't have a need to actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis other than just looking at my current network on my local network at the house just to play around with it and see what's going on on my network also verify that nothing is going on wrong on my network by simply analyzing packets so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techie.